another video. Today we're gonna sit down and do a little bit of a Q&A that you guys love so much um, and I love bringing to you. I do wanna say this is the last video I'm gonna be doing here in this house. Today is Tuesday and we actually are moving this weekend. Uh, we're starting to move Friday and we will be fully moved in on Saturday. So the next video you see from me will be in my new kitchen. <laughs> Now, if this is your first time here, my name is Tia. I wanna welcome you to my channel and ask you if you would please subscribe. I would love to see you stick around. Here on this channel, I just love to share with you how you can um, live a whole food, plant-based lifestyle, and I am gonna call it a lifestyle because it is uh, really easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. You can get healthy once and for all, and so if that sounds good to you, um, again, I would love to see you stick around. Please hit that subscribe button. All right, so let's just get right into this Q&A. We have a handful of questions that you guys submitted to me over on Instagram about a week ago. Um, this first question asks, how much fat do I allow myself to have a day approximately? And I really, I don't count, um, I don't, keep track of macros or calories or anything. That's what I love about just eating a healthy diet is I don't need to do that stuff. Um, but I will say this, that doesn't mean I'm not aware of how much fat I eat. Um, and when I say fat, I mean like the overt fats, like avocados, nuts, and seeds, because for those of you who are unaware, those things are completely healthy to eat. But when you are trying to lose weight, those things have more calories for the amount of volume you get versus something like, you know, a whole entire bag of frozen broccoli. You know, you can eat a whole avocado for 350 calories um, and I think close to 30 grams of fat and it's about this big that's gonna fill your stomach or you can eat an entire bag of broccoli. I don't necessarily recommend that, but just for comparison's sake, a whole entire bag of broccoli is gonna give you a giant bowl to help fill your stomach for close to um, 110 calories in almost no fat. Again, I'm aware of the fat that I'm eating. To give you an example, if I am having avocado for the day, I'll have one fourth of an avocado. Let's say I'm making um, a dish that's low in fat, like my lentil marinara, and I wanna put some healthy fat on there, I'll put, again, like a fourth of an avocado instead of a whole avocado, or even a half of an avocado, or three-fourths of an avocado. Um, if I'm putting flaxseed on my oatmeal, I'll put one to two tablespoons, and then I'll just know throughout the rest of my day, you know, oh, I had two tablespoons of flaxseed and a fourth of an avocado, maybe, maybe scale back a little bit for the rest of the day. I hope that answers your question, but yeah, there is no specific number that I've tried to you know, live by. I'm just aware, just like same thing with my calories. I don't count calories, but I'm aware of how much I'm eating, you know? So um, I hope that helps. But do know, fat has more calories than protein and carbs. Fat has nine calories per gram versus protein and carbs. They have four calories per gram. So the more fat you eat, the more calories you're consuming. And again, I am not saying in any way not to eat healthy fats. These things like avocados, nuts, or seeds are so great for a healthy diet. Um, but if you're trying to lose weight, just be mindful of how much fat you're actually eating. All right, the next question we have is how do did transitioning young kids to way of eating? I think this person is maybe trying to ask, um, how did I transition my young kids to this way of eating? And, um, or how do you transition young kids to this way of eating? And I really can't give you a clear cut answer on that. Obviously for you, and your kids, you know them the best. You know what's gonna work the best for them. For me, um, definitely not forcing them to eat this way was number one in my book because I knew that was gonna backfire on me. I do also wanna let you know that my kids are not 100% uh, vegan or whole food plant-based and we're okay with that. You know, there was a time where I was able to get them eating 100% vegan and plant-based. That was during the pandemic when there were no restaurants. They weren't socializing with their friends. They weren't going to school. They weren't playing ball outside of the house. They were just here with us. So it was a lot easier for me um, and my husband to control the, the food going in their bodies to get them eating healthier foods. Things are different now. Things are back to normal 
at least here in Texas, and um, they're at school again, you know. They are share, you know, picking at their friends' foods who aren't vegan. They're going to birthday parties with regular old junk food and, and cake, um, regular non-vegan cake. They play sports where, you know, one of the parents brings a treat for at the end of the sport. So there's a lot of things that I can't control and I'm not going to try to control. That that is not something we choose to do. We want our kids to feel um, as normal as they can for them outside of the house when they're not with us. Um, not that they don't feel normal here. They love the way that they eat here in the house. But yeah, that's just, just the route we chose to take. But um, I can say when there was that time where they were fully plant-based, and let me just say this to clear up some things, they are probably about 90% plant-based, maybe even 95% plant-based. And boy, how amazing um, to have your children eating 90% of their diet whole plant foods, foods that were put on this earth for us to consume and keep us full of nutrients. I mean, that's a, a, a mom should be proud. If your kids are eating, you know, 90% um, plant foods, bravo. So don't beat yourself up. Um, even 50%, even 60%, please don't beat yourself up. Um, if you're having a tough time getting your kids to eat this way, it, you know, you're doing the best you can. You really are. And what I can say to that is you, you set the tone in the house. You know, you do the best you can to set the, the healthy tone in your house. You set a good example. You take care of yourself as much as you can, and that will rub off on them. I promise you, it may not be doing it right now, but at some point in their life, they're gonna think back to, you know what, my mom, or if maybe this is a dad, really took care of themselves. You know, I, I, I'd like to do that myself because our kids, you know, they do what they see most of the time. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of my, um, my, stick on it. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. All right, now the next question kind of goes hand in hand with that. Do you give your kids vitamins? And if so, what kind do they take? I'm so excited to share this with you. Actually, this works out pretty good. My kids take Haya. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of Haya. We absolutely love this children's vitamin because we've tried so many in the past. And as you're probably familiar with, vitamins are usually, I don't want to say all vitamins, but a lot of kids' vitamins are basically just candy in disguise, right? I mean, gosh, again, I can't tell you how many we've tried that were like that. They're full of sugar, these other vitamins, they're full of chemicals and other junk that we really don't want to be giving our kids, but our kids love taking them because they taste good, right? But Haya, this is what's so cool about them, is they were created by pediatricians, which I love. These vitamins have zero sugar and junk, yet they still taste great for your kids. My kids love the way that these taste. They're pressed with a blend of 12 organic, I do wanna say organic, fruits and veggies, and then they're supercharged with like other essential vitamins that kids need, like vitamin D, B12, zinc, and folate. And I actually wanna thank Haya, this is why this is so great that this question was asked, I wanna thank Haya for sponsoring this video and actually offering you guys 50% off your first purchase. That is freaking amazing, 50% off your first purchase. So if you wanna take advantage of that, make sure you click the link in the description box. It's the first link you'll see um, to take advantage again off 50% off your first bottle of Haya. All right, this next question is rebounder update, please. Now, for those of you who are like, what in the world is a rebounder? Um, a rebounder is like the little mini trampolines. Back at the beginning of this year, I had set a goal to um, get more fit, to build a little bit of muscle, and I was gonna do it bouncing um, or jumping instead of the traditional way of lifting weights or push-ups, stuff like that. So I started consistently jumping on my rebounder in January, things were going great, and then at the end of January, my family and I got COVID. Now, we were lucky enough to basically just get, at least me, a little low-grade fever for a day and a stuffy nose for a day. I did lose my taste and smell for um, about a week, but it wasn't that bad. 
Uh, but I did stop rebounding while I was sick to give my body a chance to recover well. And I will tell you this, I did experience from COVID, I'm assuming, a very foggy laziness that lasted quite a while. I would say well into March, um, maybe like the beginning of March. And I, I didn't want to push myself. And so I fell out of the consistent rebound jumping. I did do it every now and then when I felt like I could handle it, but it wasn't going consistent enough for me to see many changes. And so once I started feeling better in uh, March, um, I would say maybe actually we went on spring break in March. So I would say April came along, mid-April, I definitely started con uh, jumping consistently. I've been doing that now, but there, there hasn't been like enough time gone by where I can show you like full body before and after as of what I've noticed, you know, actually physically on the outside. I can tell you this, these are some of the things though I have noticed with myself bouncing, okay? And one of these is gonna be a little too personal, but I think it's important to share it with women, especially women um, who have given birth, but uh, one of the biggest things is I, I don't pee on myself anymore, okay? And those of you who have had kids, you know what I'm talking about, right? When we sneeze, when we jump, when we jump on a trampoline, um, yeah, a little bit of a little bit of pee pee would come out, but not anymore. So I'm really excited to share that uh, that has improved dramatically. Um, another thing that's improved dramatically is my sleep. I sleep better than ever. Now I have been sleeping really well ever since eating a plant-based diet, but there is a significant difference in my sleep, my sleep patterns, and it's it's pretty amazing. I am noticing, um, well, first of all, let me say this, the intensity of the exercises that I do on the Rebounder um, are dialed up tremendously now. Um, so with this, you know, almost month and a half of me consistently jumping, and I will say this, I jump about four to five times a week, for 15, 20 minutes, and I just have really fun. For a while, I was following um, the Trophy Twins at I Jump Instead. They have awesome free rebounding routines. They have like upper body building routines, lower body, they have aerobic. I would highly recommend checking them out if you don't. But for a while, I was actually following their programs, and then I kind of wanted to just have a little fun on my own. I learned some of the um, things to do for like building up arm strength and leg strength, and so I kind of free ball it myself now. And I'm starting to notice cuts in my arm, which is really awesome. Uh, again, those of you who have been following me for a while, you kind of know my body shape, which I do love. I am not a stick. I do have a larger upper body and a smaller waist and, you know, nice nice hips, so I'm, I'm kind of an hourglass figure. I do have a, a bigger upper body, which with that comes, you know, larger arms. And um, so I am working on strengthening my arms and toning my arms more than anything, I should say. And I am definitely noticing some cuts. You can't really see, obviously I have a black shirt on, but yeah, um, so I'm gonna consistently continue to jump. I'm hoping to give you an update this summer, probably later in the summer, but yeah, I'm hoping to be able to consistently jump and um, give you that update, but man, awesome. Yeah, it's such a great workout and it's so much fun. All right, next question is, how much fiber do you eat in a day? Again, I don't keep track of that, especially eating a plant-based diet. If I was eating the standard American diet, I probably would keep track of my fiber because it's very hard to get the recommended amounts of fiber in a day eating the standard American diet. But eating a whole foods plant-based diet, I mean, I get more than enough fiber and I feel amazing. I have great gut health. Um, so yeah, for me personally, I don't track it. I don't feel like I need to because I am eating um, so many fruits and veggies. So yeah, that's my answer to that question. What did, so the next question is, what did you do to get over plateaus in weight loss? This is a great question. This is a common thing that happens. If you are on a weight loss, weight loss journey, I wanna tell you, expect a plateau. That's normal, that's gonna happen. And typically with plateaus, from my own experience and from the research I've done, from being a nutritionist, um, from, from what I know, 
of plateaus is typically. What happens with the plateau is as you're losing weight, your body is requiring less calories to run efficiently. And so if you don't adjust the calorie intake, let's say you're eating, I don't know, I'm making this number up. Let's say you're eating 1800 calories a day and with doing that, you've gone from 200 pounds to 150 pounds. And then you get to 150 pounds um, and it, the scale's just not moving anymore. And you wanna continue to lose maybe 20 more pounds, but the scale isn't moving. And you're like, but I lost um, 50 pounds eating 1800 calories. Why is Why am I not losing any more weight? It's because now that you weigh 50 pounds less, your body doesn't need 1800 calories to run efficiently. It maybe only needs 1700 calories or 1750 calories and you're now eating in a calorie surplus. So your body's just, or maybe not a calorie surplus, you're eating just enough. And so your body's able to just stay where it is. So there has to be some kind of adjustment somewhere. Now how you adjust that is up to you. Some people choose to start restricting. That is not something, the great thing about a whole food plant-based diet, um, that's not something you have to do is restrict because these foods on a plant-based diet are naturally lower in calories for the amount of volume that you can eat. Minus avocados, nuts, and seeds. Again, those are very healthy to eat, but when you're losing weight, those have more fat and calories for the volume you get to eat versus um, a potato or two cups of rice or um, whole grain pasta or fruits and veggies. So if you're experiencing a plateau, you need to, number one, I would say, don't panic, this is normal, this is a good thing. This is your body, to me, it's a good thing. It's a way of your body communicating you, um, telling you maybe that you need to do some adjustment if you want to continue to lose weight. So to finish what I was saying, and you need to, what you need to do is get in that calorie deficit again. So again, you can restrict if you want. Um, I totally don't choose that. I don't recommend it, because how miserable is that? Um, you can do what's called, you know, the, the popular 50-50 plate, where you take half of your plate and um, fill it with starch, and then the other side of your plate is filled with non-starchy veggies. Now this is a great tool to manipulate your plate to keep the same amount of volume that you're used to eating but have less calories. A lot of people choose to do the 50-50 plate. Um, but I do wanna say this, it's not the end all be all. It's not the only way to get out of a plateau. I did it for a little while when I did reach a plateau but it wasn't my cup of tea. I love my starch. Not that I don't love veggies but I didn't wanna give up the amount of starch that I was used to eating to lose 50 pounds, that was amazing. So other things that you can do, things that I did was I decided to eat more potato meals. Potatoes, like I was just saying, are lower in calories um, versus like rice and um, whole wheat pastas and oats. You know, potatoes are the lowest in calories, I believe. So if more of your meals are made of potatoes versus rice, you're just naturally gonna be eating less calories, still satisfied, still full, just gonna be eating less calories. And sometimes it's as small as, you know, 100 to 50 um, calories less you need to be eating consistently. You know, even the smallest deficit can get things going again, but you do have to be in a deficit. So again, um, eating more potato meals works. Um, being more active. You know, another thing that I did to lose my 50 pounds, I wasn't consistently exercising. Just gonna be honest with you, I didn't need to. Now, uh, where did I go wrong with that? Um, well, exercising, if you wanna be healthy, you gotta exercise. Our bodies need to move. And um, so, you know, bad on my part for not consistently exercising during the weight loss phase. Um, but it's okay, you know, I'm not gonna beat myself up about it. I learned things and I still lost weight. So that was great. But again, to answer your question, to get out of a plateau and to, to get back in a calorie deficit, you can 
become more active. I, at one point, started making sure I hit 10,000 steps a day, and um, that actually got the scale moving again for me. That was something that was enjoyable for me, and I wanna say that. If you're gonna choose that route, make sure you're doing an activity that you like. Don't make this a chore. Don't make your body um, feel exhausted unnecessarily. Do something that you like, whether it's tennis, whether it's hiking, um, running. For me, it was just, making sure I, again, hit 10,000 steps a day. So those are some of the things you can do. I'm sure there's many others. And to just kind of end this very long answer, <laughs> hopefully it's helpful. I do want to say, with all of these things, you're not gonna see a change unless you are consistent. Please remember to be consistent. And I don't mean four days in a row, I mean forever. Well, maybe not forever, because you might not want to eat, you know, potato, so many potato meals forever. But while you're, you know, trying to get to your goal, commit to doing some of these things, you know, commit to hitting 10,000 steps every day, although that's something that might not be bad to do forever. But um, commit to eating, you know, five potato meals a week instead of one um, until you reach your goals. Commit to eating the 50-50 plate um, for two of, your, uh, two of your meals out of the three meals a day until you get to your goal. You've got to be consistent to see any changes. I think that's with anything in life. Okay, so hopefully I answered your question with that. This next person says, I'm struggling eating with my friends. How do I stay on track? Yeah, this can be a really tough one. And my answer might not be your favorite answer. You know, this is just, again, I can only give you examples of what I did or what helped me, um, you know, that maybe can help you throughout your journey. But when I first switched over to eating this way, I didn't go out with my friends anymore. Um, unless they wanted to do things like go on a hike with me um, or come to my house and eat my food and hang out with me in my environment. Going out to a friend's house or going out to a restaurant with a friend was not good for me. Um, I'm a very black and white person. I'm not good with the dabbling, you know, with, oh, I'm gonna stick to this way of eating, but if I get invited here, you know, yeah, I'll partake in a little bit of this and that. I can't do that because somewhere in my mind, um, I start to tell myself, this is okay. Look, you know, you, you had a little bit of this and you're fine, you're not gaining weight or your cholesterol is staying the same and then it becomes a pattern for me and things don't stay the same. So I have to say black and white. Now things are obviously different now because I've been living this way for almost three years, but in the beginning, I definitely had to stick to a black and white way of life. Um, so I didn't go out with friends unless again they came here or it wasn't related to food at all. We went like hiking or did something fun. For about three months, you know, I wanted to give myself a chance to create new habits, to, to, to squash the bad ones, you know, and, and replace them with good things. So that's kind of what I did. Now, if you don't want to give that up, what I can tell you is, and I don't really know, you know, if you're going to a friend's house, if you're going to a restaurant or whatnot, regardless of what it is, I would say eat a lot of food before you go out with your friends or you go eating with your friends, don't eat. You don't have to eat. I know that might feel strange, but if you go, you don't have to eat. If you, if you want to, because it does feel strange, bring your food. You can also maybe, if you don't want to bring your own food, because I understand that that can be, put you in an uncomfortable situation, just order a salad, you know, bring your own, bring a little, there's those little plastic containers with the lids. I think people like make jello shots out of them or whatever. Um, just bring one of those with a salad, an oil-free salad dressing, pop that in your purse, and then order a salad and, whip out your salad dressing and just have that to eat with your friends. But there's things you can do. Eat ahead of time, bring your own food, order a salad. You can also suggest a restaurant that maybe has food that you can eat and you just ask for oil-free stuff if you're oil-free. If you're going to a friend's house, again, bring your own food or eat something that's gonna fill you ahead of time, something with a lot of fiber so you're not craving things. You know, fiber really does well with squashing cravings. So um, 
Yeah, that's my best advice to you, but give yourself a chance. And listen, if you mess up, it's okay. Like, we're human, that's gonna happen. You know, if you go, if you put yourself in a situation with a lot of yummy food, a lot of fatty food that smells delicious um, and you're starving, our bodies are going to, our natural instinct is gonna be to eat that food. We don't wanna starve, you know? Um, so mistakes happen. The thing is to just get right back on track next meal. Don't give yourself permission to, you know, ruin the rest of the day and binge eat. That's something I used to do. Just, you know, chalk it up, say, oops, I made this mistake, and um, next meal is gonna be a, a healthy one, you know, so. That's my advice with that. Um, next question, did you ever fall into funks in the beginning and how did you get back on track? I mean, this kind of goes with what I was just saying. You know, we're gonna make mistakes and that's gonna happen. If that happens to you, um, just say, you know what, I'm human, I made the mistake, I'm not gonna do it again. I'm gonna try my hardest to not do it again. And, you know, flex that discipline muscle and continue to do the things you were doing. Again, consistency is key here. If you slip up, once, you know, or twice, that's not going to make a big difference. If you're slipping up consistently once or twice a week, that is going to catch up to you. So yeah, just stay consistent with the way that you've been eating, the healthy way you've been eating. And if for some reason you accidentally slip up, have some grace, understand that it happens, but just get right back on that horse and keep going, you know, stay consistent with the healthy way that you're eating. To answer your question, did I fall into funks? I didn't, and that's just because I am so black and white. I didn't put myself in situations where I think I would have faltered. And, but again, I'm not perfect. And once I did get to my goal weight and I did start maintaining, I would say like that next summer when my kids were home from school and snacking all the time, like I started to pick and do habits that I wasn't, normally doing habits that I had gotten rid of, I started doing those again, and I did. I gained those five pounds I was talking about earlier. So yeah, again, we're all human. It's gonna happen, but you've got to remind yourself of why this is important to you. What is your why? Why are you doing this? Remind yourself of that and remind yourself that, you know, you can do this you can do this, it takes planning, a little bit of planning, not a lot, a um, little bit of preparation and consistency. That's, that's it. This person says, I have a chip addiction. Girl, I get it. <laughs> Seriously, I cannot stop. I think you need to make your own chips. I totally think you can. I used to do it all the time when I was kind of like in a chip mode. I go back and forth, you know, with food. Some of y'all might do that too. You might like have weeks where you love to eat oatmeal and then you can't stand oatmeal and then it comes back a couple months later. That happened to me with chips. And so what I did is I found um, oil-free tortillas. Just take those and then slice them with a pizza cutter into fours to make like little triangle chips and lay them out evenly on a nonstick baking pan, put them in the oven for 350 degrees. This is what I did for about five minutes and I watched them very closely because they can burn quickly. Like you'll look at them one minute and they look white and not cooked at all and then like two minutes later they're burned. So you gotta keep an eye on them. But five minutes you can have delicious chips. You can um, squeeze lime on them, put um, any seasoning you want, a little light salt, amazing. Amazing, so if you have a chip addiction, eat your chips, you make them though. Don't buy them at the store. You make your own chips. This person asks what to do first. I'm assuming that means like with transitioning to this way of eating, what do I do first? That's tough to answer. Some people like to go cold turkey. Um, that is what I did, I went completely cold turkey, um, and it went fine. Um, but a lot of people, I think, find it easier to slowly transition to this way of life. So that could look like something as easy as giving up chicken this week, you know? And then after you master giving up chicken, you're gonna give up beef. Or like someone like my mom, she gave up milk first. She had a huge milk, I'm gonna say addiction. <laughs> Um, she, and that's, I would say that should be the first thing you get rid of. If you are eating a standard American diet, maybe consider giving up dairy first because there's a lot of 
things that really come from consuming dairy that aren't great for you. So anyway, she gave up dairy first and then after she did that, she not only had confidence because she was like, oh my gosh, I can do this. Like I gave up dairy, which is the one thing I never thought I could give up. What else can I give up? And she just slowly started giving up other things like meat and um, you know, the, the list goes on and on, eggs. But you might be one of those people that, that does best with slowly giving something up um, one week at a time or two weeks at a time. You need to go at your own pace. You need to do what's best for you. I can't tell you that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know yourself better than anyone. Again, for someone like me, going cold turkey was the way to go, but it, I'm a very black and white person. I can't dabble in the middle. So kind of reflect on that. Think about throughout your life, you know, how, how you've been able to change and what, what was required to do that. And then you can figure out, you know, how to do this. Um, what are some of your, your kids' favorite meals that don't include vegan processed foods? That's a great question because I think a lot of kids love processed foods, vegan or not. A lot of times I will give my kids, and this is to answer your question, one of their favorite meals is spaghetti with very little bit of sauce. I don't get that, but like just enough to like color the pasta, <laughs> like, a, like a tinge orange color. Uh, anyway, they love just pasta um, with a side of veggies and, and sometimes fruit if they're not feeling the veggies, but I usually give them veggies. And um, I have been loving green lentil pasta. The red lentil pasta for my kids, they look at it and they're like, what are you, what are you doing here? You know that this isn't normal pasta. Um, the green lentil pasta looks like regular pasta to me and to my kids. It tastes delicious and it's full of protein and fiber, so I don't worry so much that they're not eating you know, a meat, vegan or not. Um, on the side. So I give them green lentil pasta with a little spaghetti sauce. And then for my son, he loves broccoli. I just spit. He loves broccoli. My daughter loves peas, which again is great, full of protein. You know, just depending on if he's eating the broccoli, I'll give him like a little handful of cashews too, because he'll love that. Um, after dinner, if he's still hungry, my kids eat like apples with uh, dip them in peanut butter, that's really good. But I keep their meals really simple. You know, theirs don't have to be complicated e either. If they're eating a lot of whole plant foods, they're probably getting all the nutrition they need, if not more, um, than when they were eating mostly standard American food. So that's one meal that they like. They also love my red beans and rice. Now sometimes it takes a little bribing to get my daughter to eat it, but once she does, she's like, this is good. And I'm like, I know, I told you, I tell you this almost every week. Not sure why you're not remembering that you like it, but um, yeah, they love my red beans and rice. They love avocado toast. Like that's an easy, nutritious meal to give them. Um, avocado toast and then on the side, They'll have like some big protein source. So whether that's, you know, a handful of nuts, I do sprinkle about um, two tablespoons, one to two tablespoons of hemp seeds on their avocado toast to add that extra protein in fiber. Yeah, on the side, they'll have nuts. Um, again, they love apples, any type of fruit my kids love and enjoy. My son absolutely loves my sushi bowls. He is, like it's one of his favorite things. So he'll eat my sushi bowls with rice and avocado and cucumber and shredded carrots. We put, you know, crunched up seaweed, the little nori sheets on top. He loves that. I like to put edamame, like shelled edamame in his to add again that protein and some um, just extra healthy fat. The avocado is in there with it too. Um, the lentil marinara they like. Now that is something that is low fat. So if you're feeding that to your kids, you wanna make sure you're adding some type of fat to that. Usually I'll put some avocado on top of that for them. Chili, my bean chili's good. My sweet potato and black bean chili they love. I'll link some of these meals like my red beans and rice and the sweet potato and black bean chili um, down below. The other things like avocado toast and you know pasta, well, I'm not gonna link that, but yeah, those are just some meals. There's plenty out there that, that your kids can enjoy that don't involve 
processed foods. But All right, last question is, what do you cook on days you don't wanna cook because it feels like a chore? This is a great question. Um, I do wanna say cooking never feels like a chore for me. That is what I try to share with you guys here on this channel, how to eat this way very easily. Um, when cooking did feel like a chore for me, that was when I couldn't stick to this way of eating. I just couldn't because it was, I didn't have time to be doing long cooking, nor did I want to. And so um, all the meals I share with you here on this channel are things I just throw in a pot or even sometimes a bowl, pop it in the microwave or pop, you know, warm it in the pot, add a sauce and um, quick, like five, 10 minutes. And I will say, I'm so excited to share with you guys in the next, two weeks for sure. My new cookbook, 10 Minutes or Less, 10 Minute Meals or Less. It is um, over 50 things to eat, meals that take 10 minutes or less. They're so simple and um, delicious and I can't wait to share that with you. But yeah, to answer your question, what do I cook on days I don't wanna cook because it feels like a chore? Um, I, I'm cooking the stuff you see and it never feels like a chore for me. I will say this though, like family meals, I'll just do instant pot meals. Like those are the easiest or one pot wonder meals, you know, where you just throw everything in a pot. But again, that's kind of everything I'm all about. If you keep things simple, really all you need, you don't need all these ingredients and all these different recipes. Like we don't need to be doing that stuff. If you just keep it simple, like, veggies and and starches like those things are the ingredient those are the stars of the meal you don't need much more really to make a meal so the way i keep it like the blueprint of all of my meals is a starch whether that's potatoes rice whole wheat pasta um you know lentils beans you have a starch you have veggies and you have a sauce that's all you need. Throw it all in a pot. Let it marinate together for five, 10 minutes and you're done. You're completely done. And there's ways to make those things go faster. Like I keep frozen rice. I keep a lot of frozen veggies. Um, sometimes on the weekend, I'll make a lot of pasta and freeze that. So in the, the great thing about all these frozen foods, and yes, they are still nutritious, you know, um, is that if I'm coming home from picking the kids up from school and after school activities and I'm like, oh, I didn't think about dinner and it's six o'clock, I just take that stuff out the freezer, throw it all in a pot, put the tap on, you know, I stir it when I need to. And in 10 minutes, it's all defrosted. I put my sauce on it and it's done and it's so easy. Things just don't have to be complicated. I would encourage you to figure out your staple foods, the foods that you and your family love to eat all the time, whether that's potatoes, spaghetti, um, bean dishes, like a lot of Mexican things. What do y'all enjoy eating the most? Taco night, we love taco night. And then, and then so figure out the staple foods for those meals and then keep them in stock in your house and never run out. You know, I never run out of frozen broccoli, frozen peppers, frozen corn, frozen rice, canned beans, BPA free lining cans and no salt added cans, but I never run out of that stuff. Does that mean I don't eat fresh uh, veggies? Yeah, I eat fresh veggies all the time and I eat, um, I cook beans and let them soak overnight all the time. But when I want something to go fast, when I need something to go fast, I have those quick, um, you know, pantry staples in hand so I can whip up quick meals. Low sodium soy sauce or tamari or coconut aminos, if that's what you use. Um, nutritional yeast, I'll link my staple meal videos down in the description box so you can watch that video if you haven't seen it, but I highly recommend it. Uh, I mean, for me, I can't live any other way. Yeah. All right, that is it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, will you please give it a thumbs up? Come on, this is the last video in this house. My friends, give it a thumbs up. Oh, I'm gonna miss this staircase that we redid last summer and, and all of the stuff. My front door that we redid, you can't really see it, but we had the welder come and like take all the scrolling off and redo it, a little farmhousey. Um, I'm gonna miss it, but I am so excited to get in the new house and do my videos in the new house. Look at all these boxes. I packed every single one by myself. 
Not that my husband didn't do anything, but you know, over the last eight weeks, I've been packing like crazy and now it is here. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will be seeing you next time in the new kitchen. <laughs> All right, y'all have a good day, bye.